Stop the Presses, Taylor Swift's new album, The Tortured Poets Department, has dropped. And you better believe we're going to unpack it right now. Here to give us a vibe check is noted Swifty and Channel 7 Sunrise correspondent Matt Tinney. Matty, on first listen, was Tortured Poets Department everything you'd hope for? Mate, I absolutely love this album. And I've seen some of the reviews coming out saying Taylor Swift needs a break. There's nothing new here. But, you know, I've really enjoyed listening to it. What I want to do is listen to it again with, like, red wine, chocolate, maybe some tissues and, (laughs) and, you know, um, really get into the lyrics and what she's saying because a lot of it does feel very autobiographical. I think we were thinking it was going to be about Jo Alwyn, the person who she had the relationship with for six years there. But it seems like it's about Maddie Healy, uh, who's from the band 1975. And the reason being, she put out a tweet when she released the album. She says, The Tortured Poets Department, this is the name of the album, an anthology of new works that reflect events, opinions and sentiments from a fleeting and fatalistic moment in time. Not six years, obviously, there. One that was both sensational and sorrowful in equal measure. This period of the author's life is now over. The chapter closed and boarded up. There's nothing to avenge, no scores to settle once wounds have healed. And upon further reflection, a good number of them turned out to be self-inflicted. This writer is of the firm belief that our tears become holy in the form of ink on a page. Once we have spoken our saddest story, we can be free of it. And she ends up with, and then all that's left behind is the tortured poetry. Listen, so she said there's no revenge to be had and she's written some of these songs. So she's written some (laughs) of these songs clearly about Maddie Healy and one of those songs is called The Smallest Man Who Ever Lived. Yes. Uh, And and another one is My Boy Only Breaks His Favourite Toys, which I reckon is about Healy as well. Let's do a bit of a deep dive into the album now um, because we've both had a chance to listen to it uh, and it kicks off with a song called Fortnite. It features a collaboration with Postman alone. A posty Swifty collab wasn't something mm. I had on my bingo card for 2024. To me, it's giving Lana Del Rey vibes. I agree. I'm 100% on board with you on that. I think it's a great song to set up the album. It gets you into the vibe of where she wants to put you, but I wouldn't say it's a banger. No. No. Um, but it does set it up. Yeah, and it's it's the sort of album that I wouldn't say has any real obvious bangers like some of her well, earlier well, albums. I, I disagree with oh, you, do you on really? that. What have, yes. what have you got for me? What, 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 what do you reckon? I think Who's Afraid of Little Old Me is yeah. the banger of this album, and I think that will come out as a single. Um, I also like I Can Do It With a Broken Heart, which sounds a little bit like Mastermind. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the other one the other one that I really like is Florida, which is the one with Florence Welsh. I, I think that's, that's really powerful. And I actually like the title track, The Tortured Poets Department. It feels – it's not the same as All Too Well, but it's got so many little details in it, you know, instead of the – scarf from All Too Well. It's got the typewriter and I, I really want to do a deep dive on that one. I need to I need to go back over the lyrics of that one. Yeah, um, well, yeah. well talk, talking about the lyrics, it does feel, as you said, that this album is extremely personal. Uh, the lyrics are sometimes are incredibly dense uh, and if there's a criticism for me, it's maybe that sometimes those lyrics feel a little bit forced, but you talk yeah. about the, you talk about the tortured poets department, the song. Uh, it's a brutal takedown of an ex and also it's the first example really on this album that Tay Tay is going to drop some F-bombs. There are a number of (laughs) a number of songs on this album that have the you know E for uh, explicit language Uh, and Mm. a line from Tortured Poets the song is who's going to hold you like me no effing body except she doesn't (laughs) say effing. No, no. And do you know what? It's a bit of a risk for an artist who has so many fans who are Mm. you know in primary school but you know the thing is The Taylor Swift of now is like a woman in her mid-30s. You know, she's not early 20s. So she's had a bit of life. She's had things happen to her and she wants to talk about it. This album to me feels very much like it's her therapy. It's almost like her therapist said, go away, write a journal. And she's turned those journal writings into songs rather than perhaps starting with a catchy chorus and then building a song around that. Yeah, I agree. Uh, And a song like So Long London, which does look like that is one of the breakup songs about Joe Alwyn. Like Mm. that's that's giving me uh, Robin vibes, you know, the sort of indie dance 
events. Yeah. Uh, sort of a bit of a low key banger, um, uh, which I think is is a pretty interesting song as well. I liked that one. Yeah, I like that one too. Yeah. And it looks like the critics have enjoyed this album as well so far. The Guardian gave it four stars. Rolling mm. Stone gave it five stars. The Independent gave it five stars. NME could only imagine three. Uh, only managed three stars. Um, but yeah. still, generally speaking, from the big media outlets, uh, some pretty glowing <laughs> reviews. So I'm going to put you on the spot, Maddie. You haven't had a chance to really digest it. How many stars are you going to give it? Look, I reckon it's somewhere around the four and a half. Oh, oh. Somewhere around four and a half, I think. But, you know, that's one listen. Yeah. You know, once I get the chance to <laughs> listen to it over and over and over all weekend and bore my kids with it, you know, skipping past the, the tracks with the F-bombs. Um, <laughs> Which is half the know, tracks. I, I might give it a, a little bit more, but for me, like I love her album 1989. I love that album. So many songs on that album I absolutely love. This one, I'm sure some of the songs that aren't, you know, jumping out at me yet will eventually. It's got enough there to work with, enough to work with. I think it will be interesting because the Eras Tour kicks off again in Europe, whether she includes parts of Tortured Poets Department mm. in that tour, you know, refreshes it. And, you know, there are definitely a few upbeat tracks that in my mind would work for that tour at the end. Yeah, exactly. And for everybody, you know, you might have to wait a couple of days till all the Easter eggs have been discovered and revealed. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's all part of the fun of Taylor Swift. Channel 7 Sunrise correspondent and our resident Swifty, Matt Tinney. Thanks for joining us on The Nightly Five. Mate, thanks for having me.